We've been on a kick of the pessimist, and I'm here for it. Oh, yeah. That's what's always in here for me lately. Although we did do the bodyguard Chardonnay. Um, If you listen to us, you know we drink a lot of Dal Vineyards, and it's because... It's really good. It's outstanding. If you have a chance to go to the winery, go to the winery. Um, We're still missing Kayla. I miss her. It's really weird. I miss her spirit. I miss her energy. And even seeing her outside the studio, it's like this... I know uh, people who listen or watch know us well enough to know that this is our therapy. Yeah. So I miss her being here. Me too. We miss you. And she's had, I feel like when she comes back, she's going to have some crazy stories. So did she tell you that we have decided we are going to have like probably the most explosive episode because it is equal parts horrifying, yeah, sad, and just like, oh my God. Yeah. So. By the way, total side note. I've realized that high waisted pants when you're videoing shooting on a couch is they look not like you're the pregnant. Move. I did that it's the other. It's like the weirdest <laughs> thing. I'm like, <laughs> I did that. We've also been trying to get our angles better here uh-huh. because we are doing everything behind the scenes. Here I mean, as people who've literally grown up in the entertainment industry in various yeah. facets, it's like, yeah. how in the world? I know. And I was like, oh, I really thought those high waisted jeans looked cute until I saw. <laughs> I wore mine to St. Jude and I thought they were awesome. And then I they sat were. down. Yeah, because I was standing up with four inch <laughs> heels on. When I, sat, when I sat down at a dinner, I was like, what? I would venture to say, happened? though, that it doesn't matter how tiny you are. If you're we- wearing well fitting oh. high waisted jeans, you're going to have like a weird. Like a four month pregnancy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, maybe. And I actually just untucked. I just untucked my shirt because I was like, oh, Um, okay. So we're going to talk about something we've been wanting to talk about for a while. It's really important, but really quick before we get into the episode and talk about booby smushing, if you would subscribe on YouTube, come check out our shenanigans. If you're listening on a podcast platform, Come on over to youtube.com slash hi, my name is mom and vice versa. Yeah. You're it's not always YouTube. easy to watch. I mean, I, I get it. Like, but I love, I love podcasts for when you're working yeah. out or in the car or whatever. Yeah. Car pickup line. I get lots of podcasts listening. And also, even though Kayla hasn't been with us in studio, she's still all over social. So at hi, my name is mom official to see what's been going on with her, or at least a piece of her story, mm-hmm. because it truly, there's a lot of craziness and, and, but she's healing she, in a lot of ways, she's healing a lot. Physically and emotionally, and we cannot wait to have Maybe her Maybe spiritually, back. mentally, yeah, all of it. Yeah. It's kind of a runs the gamut. Yeah. Wow. You want to yeah. talk about what we're going to talk about? Yeah. This is Hi, My Name is Mom, a podcast about motherhood. Here are your hosts, Jen, Corey, and Kayla. Okay. I was going to get my first mammogram here this month, 2023. It's on my vision board. I need to do it. And you are actually. Wait, wait, what's the picture on your vision board? It's just boobs and a bra. (laughs) They're actually mine. They were lactating boobs. So they were like ginormous. And it's one of those that I'm like, uh, maybe if I ever got my boobs done, they would look like that. And so I kind of always look at that picture going. "Mm, ah, So so it makes you think about. Plastic surgery and also preventative medicine. It's like Both. dual purpose vision Keep board. My boobs healthy is what it comes down to. Healthy and pretty. Oh, healthy and pretty. Yeah. And so we had both agreed that we were going to like schedule our mammograms. Yeah. Neither of us would have them. We're both like in our early, we're in our early 40s. We can still say early. Well, yeah. And when so, do they start recommend? Am I right to say that they recommend them after 40? I don't we know. Were, I read differing things. It used to be that they recommended them after 40, right? And now I feel like they're not recommending them until a little later. Yeah. Um, one of my closest friends from Virginia, Jen. Hi, Jen. Her husband is um, a radiologist and all he does is read breast, breast films. Right. So he's like, actually, he's a wealth of knowledge. We should have brought him on. He would have been fun oh, to Can we call blush. him? We could call him if we have questions. <sighs> we might. You should have text to do that. him and just ask him if he's available for questions. Oh my God, he would be so funny. Um, so anyway. When you scheduled yours, I scheduled mine. And something that I hadn't actually thought about, I wasn't really scared of the idea of a mammogram. I I didn't put it off for any weird reason. I like my boobs played with. They were nursed on for like 10 years. So, I mean, those two parts of my life, like the fun part and also the like nursing humans part, I feel like. Not a big deal. This can't be a big deal, right? So, but you brought up this idea of having a 3D mammogram. Yeah. And I was like, I've heard of this and I need to make sure I do that. So I canceled mine. 
So you haven't canceled yours. I had mine today. So exciting. Yeah. So exciting. <laughs> I'm dying uh, to know. I'm like, yeah, oh, no. yeah. No, I I have always been big on preventative medicine. We recently talked about getting our skin checks mm-hmm. and all of that stuff because I would just much rather know if something's going on as early as possible. And I've never had a mammogram. I did have something called a thermogram years ago. Have you ever Is even that heard your of that? Whole body though? No. So it was just an area, but I, I'm sure this is one of those things that some people are like, oh, that's hooey. Yeah. Is hooey a word? I don't know. It is now. That's not, yeah. Uh, and But it was recommended to me by some very holi- a very holistic doctor that I was mm. working with. It was before I worked with Haley Pomeroy, actually. Um, but he was just saying that this, uh, it basically takes a thermal image of your body because any extra cells building are being fed by blood vessels or blood or whatever. Oh. So you would see a hot spot if you're developing any kind of um, tumor. Mm. And I actually, he actually even did this like some kind of a cleanse thing because there was just one area showing up as a hot spot, even though it wasn't registering as any kind of a actual tumor. Um, but that technology, the, the idea behind it is they can detect things like that way earlier. But that is also, I also, we've talked a lot about how we like to blend different kinds of medicine, Mm -hmm. the more holistic with the sort of tried and true Western Western medicine medicine. methods. And there are more advanced technologies for mammograms now. Um, So you have 2D and you have 3D. Both are still available. But what I did talk to Haley Pomeroy about is, hey, you know, what do you know about mammograms? Anything I should be doing or, you know, recommendations. And her recommendation, which I just trust her, yeah, like implicitly, and uh, she said, you know, get the most, like the the most high tech one you can, because you're less likely to have question marks. Because oh, what can happen, especially sense. if you're with your first mammogram, is they're getting a baseline read, so they don't know what your breast looks like on a X-ray yet. So you could have like very dense, lumpy breasts. And typically, at our age, you you still do, even right. after having children. They're still very dense, fibrous tissue. Mm -hmm. And so when you're getting that baseline, if you can see a 3D image versus a 2D image, you are less likely to have to come back in for question marks. Okay. Well, that makes me feel better. And then she said, take extra selenium, which I assume is because of the low-dose radiation. I don't know. She just said, take extra. So I took it yesterday. I'll take it today. I'll take it this week. And so I just ordered some selenium um, on Amazon, like a high-quality selenium, and I'm taking that. Okay. So- Tell me, take me through the day. What do I need to expect? What'd you do? And I actually shot some no, footage. I'm terrified. I shot some footage too. Not of me actually getting the mammogram. They wouldn't let me do that. And I couldn't, I wasn't able to take any pictures or video of my scan. And I couldn't say like who the tech was or any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. But I was able to shoot a video in the room with the machine. Okay. Um, Cause I would have been happy to blur it. Yeah. So uh, it's a brand new office for a, uh, a sort of, I don't know if it's called a franchise when it's like, there's a bunch of these offices mm-hmm. around that do the, the 3d mammograms. And this is a brand new office right near my house. And I was totally prepared to go in. I had a nine 30 appointment and I kind of blocked out my morning. Right. Cause I didn't know how long it was going to take. I was in and out in 25 minutes. Oh, wow. So I, I like before that nine 53, I was calling you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. So I went in, they took me right back. They took me into a large bathroom and just said, Hey, um, you know, take off, you know, uh, oh. waist up. And they handed me a little bag to put my belongings in. And then they asked if I had used any kind of deodorant. Or like lotion or anything. Um, yeah. So they had wipes if you had, because I guess they can show up as like white spots on the image, oh. which you don't want. No. And I said, I just used natural de- deodorant after my shower last night. She said that was totally fine. Mm-hmm. So all I did was hop into a really pretty soft little wrap and it sounds like a day at the spa. I know it's like a day it's at the spa, kind of awesome. and then I just went in and mm. you know, and and uh, and had my feet massaged while my boobs were smushed in a machine. No, I wish. Uh, why don't they do yeah, that? I was just gonna say, maybe if men had to get mammograms, yes. I bet you they'd be getting. We need some another kind business. Of, <laughs> uh, so when I told her it was my first one, she said, "Okay, well, I'll talk you through everything." She was absolutely lovely, and so she she talked through uh, a series of questions first about my family's history of cancer whether or not I was taking any hormones, which I do take bioidentical mm-hmm. progesterone, number of pregnancies, um, if I had any had had anything removed, you know, tubes, hysterectomy, any of that kind of stuff, just because they're trying to get an idea of 
you know, your like history. risk factors and things like I that. I think, think that probably is? is calculating your mm-hmm. risk factor. And okay. then she said, you know, most people feel some discomfort while this is happening, but it's pretty quick. Um, Even with the 3D. Yeah. So it's not like when you go through TSA and you're standing up in that like thing no. and it just goes around. See, that's what I thought it was. So oh, what's no. a 3D? Uh, well, I th- I think I've never had the 2D, but I think the, the 2D difference I think is, is two plates that squish the shit out of your boobs. So like the difference is not in the machine. The oh, difference no. is in the imaging. Now I'm sad because I, <laughs> I did expect that it was going to be you like. You could stand there like this. Yes. I wish there was. There's got to be. There really rich people like have to MRI. have a machine where they just stand there and get a full body MRI. Think? It's like an MRI, right? Months. How could it not be? How could it be any different? So here's, Whatever. it's because of the breast, you can get a breast MRI, but that's a much more expensive yeah. procedure that insurance doesn't cover unless you have an issue. Mm. So I, I believe a breast MRI could be a next step if you actually are showing signs of so, any kind So of you cancer. have to go in, tell us about the actual process. You go yeah. in and you lay your boob on a plate. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So you basically stand up and she said, you know, I have this pedal and- we're going to, com- the, the more I can compress your breast, mm-hmm. the better image I'm going to get. Because what we're doing is we're flattening out, as, it sounds so weird, you're flattening out as much of the tissue as you can to avoid having these fibrous areas you can't see through. Okay. Uh, and she said, you know, some uh, most people get, like some people get uncomfortable as soon as there's anything. But she said some people are just completely fine. And if it, if it pushes too hard, you just let me know and I'll ease it up. Okay, maybe I should go where you went because now I'm like, she was so nice. You should go see the same woman. She was Mm. so lovely. And so, yeah, basically they put it up to the right height. She also gave me a huge compliment. She had it down lower and she goes, Oh, you're not as, you're not as little as I thought you were. Let me raise it up. You're not (laughs) actually that little. And I'm like, Oh my God, I feel like she's telling me I'm tall. (laughs) She was like, She was very tall. So, yeah, you basically lay, they they put on gloves and they basically have you open up one side of your gown and then they manipulate your breast. And they have a pedal that pushes the compression more or less. And then if you say, oh, too much, they stop. Did you stop. just say ouch at one point? No, or did she, I didn't care fine? at all. Okay, good. Well, you have the same. I have a very zero. high pain tolerance, so I don't know why this bothers me. No, it, it was I'm fine. sure it'll be fine. Like, I was just chatting with her the whole time. And she goes, yeah, I could tell really quick that you were going to be totally fine. Like, you're like, <laughs> so easy. You don't even care. She's like, I was giving you a lot of compression. Just for the record, my breasts can take a lot of compression. <laughs> just in case we need to put like that on our resume. Tonight? Are they flat? No, they're told. Like, I just felt them just to see. Um, well, okay, oh so my God. I'll, okay. I'll talk you through it and then I'll tell you my pain level or whatever. Okay. So you have to do a few different images. Um, they basically did like, and then you have to hold your breath so that nothing's moving. So you have to hold your breath for like 10 seconds or something. Then they'll tell you to breathe. Then you hold your breath again for another image. Okay. Then they move you and then you have to like kind of get a side view so that they're actually trying to get all the tissue all the way back to the pectoral muscle. Okay, that's good. So that they can just get the full view because sometimes people have issues like up into mm-hmm. their armpit. And so, I mean, the whole imaging process was probably 10 minutes, but that included... That was not her taking pictures. That right. was her talking me through it, doing the compression. And then she's like, okay, great. She's like, you were so easy. Mm-hmm. And I gave you a lot of compression. Um, and she did say that some people just get uncomfortable the second she's even touching them, which I get because some people are less comfortable being touched. Yeah, They just okay. wouldn't want their breasts touched. So I get that. Mm-hmm. And she said some people are just really, really sensitive I think that's also an argument for not going during your period or any time oh. that your boobs might be at a sensitive phase. That's true. And I want to say point. they might recommend not doing that anyway. Just be, maybe that's why. Maybe. Um, but after we were done, um, I took I took a video, so I'll definitely share the video. And then she said the radiologist will probably read my scans today. Oh, and nice. then within a couple days. Are they going to send you your scans? So they they send them to me, and then also the results to my doctor. Okay. And so they basically either give me an all clear. Or they, she said, you know, don't be, don't be like alarmed if they ask you to come back in because mm-hmm. with your first mammogram, it's not terribly uncommon to just get better images of certain spots. Mm-hmm. But basically, once she had done all the imaging, she checked all the scans to make sure everything looked good on her end, and that was it. And and what I said to her, and what I really feel is that, especially if you've nursed into the like past a year into mm-hmm. the toddler age, if you've ever had a toddler just grab, grab your, your boob, boob and squeeze it because they do that to try to get the milk to come mm-hmm. out faster. Yeah. So if, if you've ever had a toddler do that, compress it, this is nothing great. And then All if right. you've ever had a nipple blister, if you've ever nursed a teething toddler who basically has fangs, if you've ever had mastitis, if you've ever had thrush, if you've ever had God, any of these of the above, they're awful. Yeah. So this is they easy. are. So it'll seem like cake. All right. If that's the case, I also 
asked her about women who have breast implants because when I was oh, talking to Kayla, yeah. I was talking to Kayla uh, earlier and she was like, oh my gosh, I don't even know if that works for me. So, um, so I talked to the tech about that and she said that you can, women with breast implants should totally go for their mammograms. Mm-hmm. And she said that it takes a little longer because they have to do additional pictures to get the right angles. And ultimately what they do is they push the implant back towards the chest and they squish the tissue in front of the implant. So I I feel like it might be more uncomfortable if you have um, breast implants. But she also said it's really important because sometimes the implant can hide an issue. Interesting. So they Hmm. just have to do – she said it takes about twice as long, which is still not very long, because they have to get different angles and images to make sure they're looking all the way around the implant. Right. But she's Hmm. like, anyone with implants, please advise them to go ahead and come in. We know how to work with implants. We're used to doing it. And most people have no issues. She said some women don't like when you're pushing the implant away from the breast tissue. But I have I've seen um, Loxley manipulate yeah. Kayla's boobs and oh, I yeah. have a feeling she's gonna be fine. Yeah, she'll be fine. So yeah. That's so obviously I'm hoping that it's just like thumbs up, cool. I did get to look at the image and you know, it just looks like tissue yeah. in the shape of a boob. And then if not, I'll be glad that I had the information that I need. Yeah. As soon for as possible. Sure. I mean, unless <laughs> Unless you're like me, if you guys listen to my health scares episode, I had like some, I had some ultrasound uh, films that were very weird, obviously. Like they showed a mass and then there was no mass. And, you know, this is obviously ovarian, but I mean, same thing. It's scary. You're still like, looking at so images. when she says, if it comes in and it's irregular, like don't freak out, it's like she really means don't freak out, but she still, really means it. Yeah. It's hard not to. It's hard not to, and I know if that's the case, it'll give me another layer of nervousness. But I, I feel the same way anytime I do anything preventative. Me too. I feel the same way when I get a pap smear. I feel the same way when I get um, my yearly skin check. I always have a little edginess. Yeah. But I would rather have that edginess and know you that- You cut it early and you know something is, yeah. Yeah, because how many women do we know? Do you have people in your life that have dealt with breast cancer? I mean, I have a lot of women in my life that have dealt with breast cancer. In terms of my family, um, my grandmother on my mom's side had breast cancer, but at like 85. Wow, really? Yeah, she had old age onset of breast cancer. And they do say, like, you live long enough, you're going to get some kind of cancer. Like, it's just going to happen. So, um, but I don't know anyone else who's had any... Yeah, because you know, we just, um, Ty's sister Mm -hmm. um, has battled breast cancer and thankfully she is doing amazing and she's like a rock star. Like she has three kids and she has been so upbeat and positive. She like when she ended up shaving her head, like she was rocking it. I mean, I have I had and have so much admiration for her positive attitude through all of it. But yeah, of course, when you find something like that and then it's like, okay, well, what next? Um, But thank God she did find it and Mm -hmm. she, you know, was able to get ahead of it being worse. It's interesting. I remember when it was all women our mother's age that were dealing with that. And now for me, it's like more women our age that are dealing with it, Yeah, which just means we're, we're old. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I do have a handful of people in my life that I'm friends with, but more like Facebook friends at Mm -hmm. this point that I've seen go through it. And, you know, an interesting thing is that back when I got that thermogram and everything, right. Like I learned that so much of the forming of tumors in the breast is due to hormonal imbalance. So I, I do wonder, I, I'm not even going to say that this is why, but, you know, we are going through hormonal changes right. because we're getting to that phase where your body's like, I don't really need to still make babies anymore. <laughs> and so, like, for me, I just had all my hormones checked and I have, like, zero progesterone in my body. Yeah. And so even if you have a normal level of estrogen, that can create estrogen dominance because you don't have – it's all about the balance of the hormones. It's not about one hormone. It's great if they're in the right, you know, range – but what you want is for them to all be working together in right. harmony. And um, I'll probably never say that word the same again since time yeah. nice big fight. <laughs> um, <laughs> but a hormonal imbalance of, you know, yeah. of the hormones and like an estrogen dominance can certainly lead to issues. And um, and my mom, my mom dealt with fibroid tumors, mm-hmm. which can also, I think, be caused by hormonal imbalances. And it's interesting. I uh, I was. I had already scheduled my mammogram. Then I canceled it. And now I'm kind of like, all right, I feel good scheduling it again. Okay. Now I don't feel scared. I have to say, and I was never scared. Scared's the wrong word. It's, it's one of those, like, 
I mean, how many ultrasounds do you think you've had in your life? You a know, ton. a million. Yeah. And, as, you know, after four kids, it's like, that doesn't scare me. Nothing about that scares me. Nothing about the process scares me. But that's because I know it. You, do you know? want me to just smush your boob real fast and then you'll. Go ahead. <laughs> just, <laughs> just to make it into a boob sandwich, just a uh, little like. It's sort bink. of like our Boob Olympics video, which we should probably redo or resh- we can't redo it, but we could reshare it. You should just be like, Adrian, pretend you're turning my boob into a ham sandwich and just see, like, that you're going to take a bite of. And let, uh, let me just see how that feels. But I want you to really grab on. I don't know why I feel bite. like it. You know why? It's a ghost pain. It's not, re- it wouldn't really hurt me now. I have this like, this like ghost sensation of breastfeeding where my boobs are really sensitive and yeah. they hurt. And it's like, I can't imagine. Well, it's not pe- like that. No. So I don't know why in my head I'm like, that's how I'm You've ever had a it. baby latch with a chapped nipple? Yeah. This is nothing. Great. Cheers Nothing. to that. I'm excited to get my okay, mammogram. Can now, you believe it? And now you have to follow up with me because I I'll follow I, up with you on socials. I do think I have a weirdly high t- pain tolerance. I do too. Um, not much makes me uncomfortable. No. So now I'm like, Curious. I don't want to lead anyone astray and make them think it's like. Well, you and I were a little different. Like we had C-sections without like yeah. real pain meds. So yep. I don't, I mean, yeah. obviously we had pain meds during the process. But, but different in, kinds of pain are it's different. different. Yep. So I'm interested they to They register see. differently. Like I had, um. I had a, a colonic one time, mm-hmm. not a colonoscopy, but a colonic because mm-hmm. it was like all the rage to get your, oh, yeah. you know, clean um, out. Yeah. Oh, I did not handle that well at <laughs> all. Like I was like, there was a certain amount that they were like, you got to get to this. And I was like, stop. Like, I just hated it. Oh. So I do think that there are, y- you can be tolerant to certain pain and did not ever do pain. that on camera. No, <laughs> no, I do have a line I don't want to cross, and I don't want to see anyone to see stuff going up my butt oh, and back God, out that's again. Awful. No. Were you? If no one, if you were only shooting me from like the face up, like facial expressions, probably maybe. Great. So tune maybe. in <laughs> for Jen's on screen colonic. <laughs> oh my God. But I would love for people to weigh in because I also think it could be the tech. Because haven't you or had or the size of your boobs? Like I've heard that, like, so I have someone in my life who, um, She has a really, really, really flat chest, and she's older now. You know, she's in her 70s, so she has not a lot of fat there. She's also very, very thin. Right. So her mammograms are very uncomfortable because they have to pull so much skin from the side, and I mean, to get anything. Right. Because she has very little breast tissue. Yeah. And that's really difficult. So I'm, I am kind of curious what other people's experiences are because I think- Well, it's also making me think about, it's making me think that- I could have just gotten really lucky with the woman doing my mammogram, even though she said there was a ton of compression. And it's really more about how hard the machine is pushing, because otherwise it's just someone putting your boob in place. I right. guess you could have someone who's rough with your boobs, like yanking them around yeah, more. Yes. You know, like I remember having one ultrasound when I was pregnant. I can't remember whether it was Bash or Teddy, but I had had so many ultrasounds at this point because mm-hmm. I had rad at NYU and they did ultrasounds almost every week. All the time. Because they just had the, the machines were in the room, so it was yeah. just like, why not look at the baby? And then once I was having Bash and Teddy, my doctor there just was like, "You just don't need them. You just right. don't need this many ultrasounds." Um, and at one point, I was—I think it was with Bash—I was getting an ultrasound, and they asked if it was okay for someone who was training to come in. Um, and so she was trying to get pictures to like show that she could get the right pictures. And at one point, she was pushing on me so hard. And I was kind of like, uh, and she's like, well, I just have to, to get the right pictures. I was bruised the next day. And that, and then I've also had gotten ultrasounds where it's just like, a, like it is like a belly massage. It's so gentle and they can still get all, you know, have you had those ultrasounds where oh, like, yeah. great, click, 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 click. Okay. And then they're done and they have all the images they need. And then you have also, it could have to do with Oof. the baby's position and stuff. But I only had one ultrasound where even Ty was like ready to step in. Cause he's like, I could see how hard she was pushing on you. So I guess they're. There could be the outlying, yeah. like, sort of masochistic mammogram Ooh. techs who are like, I'm going to yank this boob all the way into the machine. Wow. But hopefully those are few and far between. Gosh. But if you've if you've had an experience like that and then here I am being like, I just put my, walk pink, in the park. my pink robe. And so I'd be curious to know other women's experiences yeah. since that was my first and only experience. Well, I will obviously share mine. I'll share it okay. on socials the week that we air this episode. Um, so, yeah. And mm. I will, of course, like, update you guys once I... Get your results. results. I know. Yeah. They're going to so, be fine. I hope so. Totally fine. All well, right. cheers to your mammogram. Yeah. Cheers. I'm very first excited. First that was down. awesome. Yay. Thanks for joining us. Get your mammogram. Get, Get your, your boob squished. Get your boob.
Make your booby sandwich. <laughs> the Hi My Name Is Mom Studio is brought to you by the Yard Sale Store. Check them out at yardsalestore.com and on socials at Yard Sale USA.